Hi everyone, um, thank you for being here today. I'm Erin, the senior editor um, at Ethos Books, and welcome to the dramatized reading of a photo by John John John. So before we begin, I'd like to thank um, Centre 42 for partnering with us for this event, and also to Singmit Station for supporting this reading. Um, we'd also like to thank Theatre Ekamatra for rallying together the crew um, from the original Potong production to put together this special reading for us. And of course, thank you all of you uh, for being here with us. So we'll be having a 30 minute reading of some scenes from Poto, and we are very lucky to have with us the original cast members from the Poto production. <laughs> so the reading will be followed by an hour long conversation and a live Q&A with the cast, the director, and John John himself. So we'll be taking questions through Slido, um, you can send in your questions throughout the program. You can go to www.slido.com slash reading. So you can send in your questions there. So now I'd like to invite Irfan Kasplan, the director of the original Potong production, and he's also directed the reading uh, today. So he'd like to say a few words to contextualize the reading. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, today we're going to do a quite science reading of scene 6, 7 and 8 of Poto. Uh, basically Poto uh, is a story about uh, Adam who is half uh, Australian, half Singaporean, who has stayed in Australia for a long time uh, and he is being ushered back to uh, Singapore uh, for his NS and circumcision. Um, he, uh, his mother, who is in Australia, has left him to meet her brother, his uncle, uh, who is uh, cross-dressing as her, with her mother who has uh, dementia. Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's. Yes. Um, scene 6 happens um, as the first phone call between uh, mother and son. Mono no aware. Give up the brakes. The ocean takes care of each wave till it gets to shore. Hello? Adam? How have you been? I'm good. I'm uh, settling down. How's your uncle? Not someone I would have expected. Sorry about that. It's okay. Mark. Did you know that Nene has Alzheimer's? I do. How is she? She's okay. She's still chatty. But she doesn't remember the Sunday. Oh, you noticed. Kind of. Comes within the territory. It's quite scary though. Being forgotten by someone you love. Well, it's not like any plan for it. I know, but still. I wouldn't want to be forgotten. You wouldn't forget me, right? Come on. I love you. I love you too, Mom. So, have you gone for the procedure? What procedure? Adam. Right, that procedure. Well, it's not so easy to arrange. Is that so? Yeah, you know, the doctor asks a lot of questions. And we might need you to sign off on it, so maybe we might just have to wait it out. How difficult can it be? It's complicated. Okay, I'm gonna get your uncle to help then. I think he might not be the best person to help. Why not? I'm only okay with getting a snip. He, he's more of a chop off the whole thing kind of guy. Adam, don't be rude. It's family. <coughs> Fine. Well. You don't have to worry about the circumcision. I'll have it figured out. Um, yes, Ma? I'm thinking of doing some traveling. And this is after you sent me away? No, 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 it's not like that. It's okay. I get it. Where do you plan on going? 
I haven't given it much thought yet. You'll be traveling alone. I think so. My first solo adventure. When do you plan on going? I'm not sure as well, but that's the part that makes it exciting, right? Or scary. At most dying. What the hell, Ma? I'm just kidding. You better be. Ma, actually, why don't you just come back to Singapore? I mean, Nene forgot about Uncle Saleh. I'm pretty sure whatever you did, she's forgotten too. If she can even recognize you at all. Ha uh ha, -huh. and then what, Adam? And then you can watch me go through this dumb NS thing. And then we can travel? You should save that for your girlfriend. I don't have one. And you're my mother. There's nothing wrong in wanting to take care of your mother, right? Alhamdulillah. Adam? Let's help Uncle Sally take care of Nene, okay? Yes, ma. But it's not so easy talking to her. Maybe it's more important that you just listen. But I won't understand what she says. I'm not even sure if at this stage she even understands what comes out of her mouth. But she just needs you to listen. I'll try. A fire alarm sounds. What's that? Is, is that my alarm? That sounds like the fire alarm. Did you leave something on the stove? What stove? What are you cooking? Really? Okay, wait, wait, let me check. Oh, oh, wow, uh, there's a fire. Uh, Put it out! Okay, I, I am, I am. Oh, shit, what was I cooking? Um, I'll call you back in a while, Adam. I need to clean up this mess, okay? You don't worry, I'll be fine. Are you sure? Call me back when you're done. Mak sayang, Adam. Uh, Adam sayang, Mak. Okay, go, go, go. Clean up the mess. What was that about? She left the cooking on the stove. She can cook? Fried rice, yeah. So she's okay? Yeah, she managed to put it out. Uncle, hmm? I'm worried. What's there to be worried about? She's been acting odd these days. You're overthinking things. Maybe. Wait, why are you dressed like that? I'm going to pray. But you look more like a man now. And you have a problem with that? But a moment ago you were... And what difference does it make to you? Does this make me less of an uncle to you? In any case, it makes you more of an uncle to me. Haha, <laughs> funny. Anyways, have you prayed? No, I was on the phone with Mark. Come, let's pray. I don't know how. Come. Uncle. Kenapa? Kau datang foto? I'm sorry? <laughs> yes, nephew. Have you... Tell me. You think? I don't know what to think, actually. Come. Let me show you. What the fuck? No! I'll show you how to pray, lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Scene 7, you get Within tears, find hidden laughter, seek treasures amid ruins. This scene happens in Dr. Dini's office, the circumcision doctor. So, do you have any questions regarding the procedure? Question? Yes. Have you done it? I have done it many times. I do run this clinic. No, as in, have you had it yourself? You're going to do it to me, and I think some building of trust is necessary. Then let's do a trust fall. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. You do know I can just say no. Well, what happened to the Hippocratic Oath? Excuse me? That you treat all patients regardless? This procedure is not life-saving. It will make my mind happy. It's not life-saving. Well, it would certainly put my mind at ease. You do know that we are anatomically different, right? Except, of course, I have a pussy and you are the pussy. That's not appropriate. And you asking me if I've had a circumcision is? Well, I need to know that you know what you are doing. I will have
have you know that I know what I am doing, what I will be doing. You don't go to a neurosurgeon and ask if he's ever had a neurosurgery done, do you? But if he has, then I know that the procedure is safe, that it's been done before. Oh God, thank you for the suggestion. Next time, I'll be sure to frame out all the foreskins I've seen. That would be grotesque. As long as it gives those like you the confidence that I am not some willy-nilly doctor and that I can trim your willy in a nilly if I wanted to. Just like that. You're using willy-nilly brown. Just like that. No, this is a loose thread on her sleeve and takes out a large tailoring scissors. Whoa, what's that for? For cutting loose threads. That big? The right tool for the right job. So have you? Yes. Was it like a job requirement? No, maybe. I don't know. It was done when I was much younger. Like my age? Like when I was a couple of months old. Oh. Why? Because you wanted to picture me all of 19, spread eagle having a part of my genitalia removed? No. It's just that... Why did you have it so young? I mean, it's your body. You should be able to decide. Like how it is for you, mummy's boy? I can't choose not to. Yet yeah, here you are, obligated. Much obliged. Well, at least I have a choice, albeit imaginary. Were you immunized? Yes, of course. Did you have a choice? No. There you go. But immunization is good for me. Some might differ. Circumcision has no health benefits. Some might differ. And so what's your point? That when you are young, you trust that your parents have your best interests at heart. Well, not all parents are that virtuous. You don't have a choice. A knock. Saliha walks in. Fuck. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, ni lama lagi tak? Sorry, awak ni siapa eh? Cik dia. Yeah. Cik dia, sorry, saya ada patient. Aku pak cik dia lah. He doesn't look the part I know. Ini, titik bedek lah sial. <laughs> and you are dumb. You don't cheat by here. You brought me here. Fine. So, when can we have the kenduri? What's that? It's a party. Your coming out party. What the hell? <laughs> it's a circumcision, not a castration. Oh, you do that too? Oh, I don't do seconds. Happy with just the tips. I am less happy when they come with tips. <laughs> Can we get back to me? As soon as you decide. Decide on? He hasn't decided if he wants to get circumcised. You brought me here, but you haven't decided yet on doing it. I needed your support. You are not like I'm your mother. Well, you play her well enough. <laughs> I really want to attend to all my appointments today. Uh, what appointments? The ones waiting outside. Oh, I think they cancel. What do you mean they cancel? You turn up for your appointment at a circumcision clinic and you see someone like me in the waiting room, your life starts flashing before your eyes <laughs> and you start doubting your decision. <laughs> Bagos. I want to do it. Okay, great. So when? If my reputation hasn't already gone, we can do it in a month's time. I see. Adam, when are you on this thing? About four months away. Enough time for it to heal, right? As long as you don't get aroused while recuperating. Why would I get aroused? Please, praise the few. Don't do that. Just making sure I smell good. Sunat used to be a milestone, you know. What's sunat? Circumcision. Like that first time you notice a strand of hair growing on your groin, and you mistake it for a loose thread and decide to pull at it. It hurts, but wow, milestone. <laughs> uh, but you girl, you make it sound like an experience. In my line, we don't get repeat customers. So I make sure it's worth their while and something they will remember for the rest of You'll be surprised how many repeat customers I get. Uh, let's not go there. Am I making you embarrassed, Adam? Well, yes. <laughs> it's what your mother would have wanted. That and this. I'm only doing this because 
She probably knows what's good for me, right? That has always been the case. But it wasn't the same for Nini and you. Now, now, let's not get personal. We are deciding the fate of my foreskin here. You know, the foreskin is something you don't exactly need. It's really just an extra piece of skin that you can do without physiologically. Like the appendix. But psychologically, it's a part of you. Like how it is for mothers and their children. Forever linked by the psychological umbilical noose. Don't be dramatic. Your mother went through the full nine months of pregnancy before she went through 23 hours of labor just to have you. She raised you for the past 18 years not asking for anything of it except for an extra piece of skin that you can do without. Have a thought of it. Well, try not to. <laughs> Why? It's a fright thing. <laughs> Fine, fine. I already decided to do it. Banzai! That's Japanese you get. I know that. I just wanted to say, let's do it. How do you say that in Malay then? Insha'Allah. <laughs> or Chuk. Or let go. Or Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Amin. You know, after you potong, potong, cut, snip. As I was saying before, you potong me. But you said after I potong. I know lah. What I said. So betul lah. Bukan masih orang putih patah hitam. What did you want to say? That after he potong, he has to change his name. Really? Why? It's because you become a man. You see? Yes. It's a family practice. My name before potong was Salehuddin Jamal. After photo, Sunday. So you truncated. Well, how about me? Adam Cockburn. After photo, become a cock. Sial. Of course. Let's get you started on your money. Basa, to do one circle. Scene 8. Saudade. Words are a pretense. It is the inner bond that draws one person to another, not words. Back at home. Adam, aku nak keluar. Oh, okay. Ingat, kat sini ni makan ubat? Yes, lepas TV. Lepas makan. Lepas makan apa? Lepas makan apa? No, lepas makan ubat, and then? Lepas makan ubat, time for Nini to sleep. Okay. So, lepas makan, makan ubat. Lepas tu, tidur. Okay. Nini tak payah dinner. Abi aku masak buat siapa? Topik kong. Sorry, what did you say? Nene is a dinner before she eats her medicine. Oh, I get it now. But okay, it's been three weeks now and your Malay is getting better. Next week, in photo. It's not bad. Mark seems to prefer speaking in Malay as well these days. I see. I wasn't able to get Mark yesterday. Maybe she's busy. It's been so long since she had time to herself, you know. But it's the first time she hasn't returned any of my calls. Are you worried? I should be, right? She's a grown-up, don't worry. And it's only been less than a day. Maybe I am overthinking things. Well, she did say she wanted to go on a trip. Exactly. Maybe she went on a road trip across Australia. It's not like they have reception in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, maybe. So, no point thinking about it too much. Have you been doing your push-ups? Yeah. How many push-ups can you do now? 32. 32? Is that your bra size or waistline? <laughs> I still have time. Besides, it's not like I want to make a career out of it. I'm just going to complete my two years and go back to Perth. But you still have to be prepared. And how would you know what it takes to be prepared? By doing push-ups. Then, you think by wearing push-up bra, is it? Itu tete made it lah sial. Sial. I might not look like it, but I was the best in my platoon, okay? Best dressed? Kalau tak kau. They let you serve in the army. Every Singaporean son served. So you actually wanted to serve? Well, there were open showers. What? She bite. So, Jaji. You served your national service just so you could shower naked with other men? 
No, la. I did it because your nene wanted me to. Really? Even though you were already dressed up by then? Saleha takes up an old uniform. Is that your old uniform? Sergeant Salehuddin Jamal reporting for duty. Nene must have been proud of you. I'd rather she accept me. Sorry. Never mind. I'm going out now. Maybe you can try calling your mother again? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, you take care, Sergeant. Don't forget to pray, recruit. Assalamualaikum. Well, I like kum salam. Adam tries calling mom. Come on, pick up. Hangs up. Adam tries again. Hangs up. He decides to go over to Salipa's old uniform. Malam ni kau balik ke? Malam ini tidur. Home. Officer kau tak marah ke? Officer. Lim yang kau kata suka main marah tu. Lim. Salih, Salih. Kau ni dah nyanyuk ke? Uh. Ma, uh, makan? Belum. Tapi Mak dah masak pun. Kau nak makan? Salih, okey. Okey tu nak ke tak nak? Saleh makan. Kan macam ni kan bagus. Macu sikit. Bukan pakai baju perempuan tu semua tu. Macam sundat. Eh tu dosa kau tu. Mak rasa. Elok jugalah kalau kau sign on. Kerja tetap. Tak payah kerja kan pangkat pun. Nak tak kisah pasal tu semua. Mak cuma nak anak mak macam gini. Gak, handsome, macho Tu Mari, mari, kau duduk, kau duduk Mak packkan bag kau tu Eh, bag cam kau mana? Ah, tak apalah ah, Mak lipatkan nanti kau tahulah macam mana nak letak balik dalam bag kau tu ah, Kau rehat dulu Nanti lepas ni kita makan sama-sama Eh? Cika, cika, bum Cika, cika, bum Sayang, sayang, anakku sayang Cika, cika, bum, cika, cika, bum Anak besar rajin belajar Ada jadi orang berguna Hidup mewah tidak akan terlantar Ada jadi orang berguna Hidup tidak terlantar Sayang, sayang anakku, sayang buah hati sayang. Ma. Apa dia Zali? Sayang, sayang ma. Baguslah tu, sejuk kalau aku dengar. Aku pun sayang kau Zali. Mak manalah tak sayangkan anak, oi. Itu pasal, Mak tak mahu kau terikut sangat nafsu kau tu. Dah, dah, dah siap. Jom kita makan. Mana adik kau, si Saliha tu? Tak balik-balik. Si Raya baju dia, eh. Eh, dia tak tahu ke dia tu anak darah sunti? Mana si Saliha? Eh, hey, dia asyik keluar je lah dia ni. Aku tahu lah dia keluar. Eh, hey, belum balik-balik lagi. Salih, Salih. Bawa je lah eh, dengar cakap mak. Jaga hati mak. Eh, tapi jangan pula eh, pernah cakap kau ni mami sebut. Aku nanti aku tak ada menantu lah pula. Kenapa aku diam, Salih? Salih? Ni ha. Eh, Raya kan tak lama lagi. Nanti kawan-kawan Ami kau datang rumah kan? Eh, kau baik buanglah semua makeup-makeup tu. Ada, ada, ada. Mak ni dah tak tahu. Makan. Eh, kau!
Okay, thank you so much to the actors for that wonderful reading. Um, now we'll be having a post-reading dialogue and I'd like to introduce our speakers. So I'll start with the actors um, who just read for us. We have Salim Hadi who plays Adam. Oh. Salim Hadi is a Singaporean actor of Malay and Australian descent. He received his training at LaSalle College of the Arts, graduating in 2017. Currently helming the role of Hafid Ibrahim on Channel 5's Sunny Side Up, he also actively seeks to still be a part of the theatre scene, um, most recently seen on stage as Jim the Gentleman Caller in Pandemonium's production, The Glass Menagerie. <laughs> Next, we have Muhammad Farid Jainal, who oh, plays yeah! <laughs> Farid engages in cross-disciplinary work that delves into the realms of both visual and performing arts, with a particular interest in space, body, and, dis and design. A strong advocate of physical theatre, he is constantly exploring body craft in performance. He is also studying the relationships between elements and principles of art and the human self asserting these links to be in symmetry and simultaneously manipulative. Farad is the artistic director of Eka Mantra and also teaches at Sota. Next is Farah Ong, who plays Siti and Nene. Woo! 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 Wow, two characters. <laughs> Farah is um, an independent artist based and residing in Singapore. She is an actor, a performance artist, a voiceover artist, and a teaching artist. She makes art, sometimes in the most unconventional medium and forms. Farah is most alive when performing. She finds the human connection pleasurable when teaching. She tries to understand pain when creating performances. Currently, she is going through a period of finding joy in everything but art. Perhaps she is trying to figure out what it means to be human. Perhaps, um, and she believes that if we, if we look at this world through the eyes of a child, there would be magic in everything. Farah possesses the curiosity of a five-year-old and she's always a child at heart. <laughs> and we have Muna Bagarit, who plays Dr. Dini. Um, Muna entered the entertainment business as a television actress and one half of YouTube duo Muna Herzi a channel in which she co-hosted satirical videos on social and political topics. She has gone on to become a prolific actress on both television and stage, with her recent film debut in Diomaru Social Club, and more recently her theatre performance as Maria Manado on Lost Cinema 2020, where she was nominated Best Actress in the Straits Times Live Theatre Awards 2020. So I'll introduce um, our other speakers. We have Nabila Said, who will be moderating the session for us. Nabila is a playwright, editor, and artist who works with text as material across different forms. She has worked with Theatre Ekamatra, The Necessary Stage, and Tea Works. And her play Anka won Best Original Script at the Live Theatre Awards 2019. And next we have Irfan Kasvan. Um, through writing, directing, performing, and designing, Irfan hopes to create intricate universes as a celebration of space and time. A freelance professional, since 2006, he was an associate artist with Theatre Ikamacha for 10 years and had a one-year associateship with the theatre practice in 2019. And in 2020, Irfan was conferred the Young Artist Award by the National Arts Council. <laughs> And, and finally, we have Johnny John John. Since his first full length play in 2006, John John's works have evolved from being thought pieces on socio political constructs to ruminative explorations of the human condition set within the characteristics of uh, minor literature. So, besides the critically acclaimed Hawa and Bottom, his works include National Memory Project, Family Dinner, and Homer. When not writing plays, John John writes short stories and facilitates design thinking workshops. He currently lives with his better half as they try to get their startups, aka children, to become unicorns. So now I'll pass the time to Lavilla to begin the session.
Thank you so much. Perhaps we should end there. The bio is so beautiful, right? <laughs> Awesome to, <laughs> but it's really awesome to hear what everyone has been up to, really. And I think for um, just to see everyone in the theatre in this black box, uh, I think it's quite something to to yeah behold. So just wanna point that out. Um, but thank you so much for joining us uh, today. You just watched uh, or just witnessed the reading of Potong, a few scenes from, of Potong from by Johnny John John. Um, but of course, today we are also here in conjunction with the publishing of a book, uh, Potong to Care Slash Cut, um, published by Ethos Books uh, of John John's plays, uh, two of them actually, so Howard and Potong. So today we'll be talking a lot about Potong because of the reading and because of, of course, the actors being here and Irfan being here as well. Um, but later on for the Q&A, feel free to ask about anything uh, to do with John John's book, his writing, playwriting, even like Malay theatre perhaps, because of the people who are here in the room today. Uh, so I'm going to start off by maybe giving the actors a bit of a break uh, after that really awesome reading. Um, and starting with uh, the man himself, uh, John John. Okay. <laughs> he looks very excited. <laughs> um, yeah, John John, how, do, how are you feeling uh, having your book out, you know, seeing this reading? Like, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I feel good. I mean, like, that's what I'm supposed to say, right? So, uh, but yeah, actually, I'm, um, yeah, um, so I, I think publishing has been quite a, a journey for me. I think, like, when I first started, like, I never thought, like, you would end up, I would end up, like, publishing. Because I, I think, like I said before, like, I only started, like, theatre because I couldn't afford film. And so, like, to publish is really, like, a, a milestone, like, like wow. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think like to, um, and I think Ethos has been really, really uh, fantastic partner on you know, this journey because like when I actually like approached them, like I didn't actually see uh, Howard and Potom being put together into one book, but they could actually see that. Um, in fact, I always thought that Potom needed to exist within a different trilogy, but they saw it as a kind of like a du duality. Yeah, I shudder to use the I shudder to use the word duality because of Surya, but. Uh, <laughs> it's a show called duality. Yeah, but but but, but yeah, but, but yeah. So, so they saw it and, and and the way that they put the book together, like even from the art to like um, helping me with like the editing, I think it has been fantastic. Yeah, I think I took too much of your time. Not at all. This is what everyone's here for. Um, but maybe I'll move on to Irfan. Maybe you can tell us like why you chose those three scenes that we saw today, and what were you kind of hoping for the audience to get from this reading? Oh, um, I chose the three scenes based on. Uh, well, John John wanted to highlight uh, scene nine, which I saw that day, um, and the good thing about the play is that um, it. Uh, Scene six is where it kind of repeats itself, like where the audience can also enter into the world of this um, without too much exposition. But it's still exposition, yeah. Scene nine, uh, just to for the audience to understand, is the which scene? Eh, no, no, sorry, scene eight. Sorry, scene eight. Sorry, scene eight. Sorry, scene eight. Yeah, which scene is it? Uh, it's the one, uh, the last scene, with uh -huh. um, Adam and um, his grandmother, who thinks he is um, her son. Yeah, and that one was. Yeah, we, we decided that it was, it was quite emotional, uh, so we wanted to end with grief to, to enter the dialogue, so I hope you all are grieving. <laughs> Actually speaking of which, just now when we were doing the rehearsal before this, um, it felt like there was, I don't know, there was a bit of emotional responses I felt uh, with the actors coming in, reading it actually for the first time. So I wanted to ask the actors actually, like what was it like to embody these roles again and this world again? Um, anyone can start. Sally? Yeah, um, yeah, well, uh, you know, for me, uh, uh, when, I, when I first, when I graduated, this was like the first play that I ever did. Um, so, you know, this, this play is very special for me. And, uh, you know, as a young, actor fresh out of drama school uh, to have a job already is like one of those things like yeah man I've got a job but not only you know was it that but it was also that you know this character was kind of written with me kind of in mind as the main character because of my own 
personal heritage, you know, me being also Australian and Singaporean, but the big difference is that I grew up here, so I'm Singaporean, but Adam, you know, he, grew, he grows up in Australia and he comes back. Um, so, you know, uh, for me, uh, personally, you know, there's so much uh, about it that just rings true in my body and my soul and, and, and kind of my lived experience. Even though Adam is from, he kind of grows up there and comes back here, you know, um, the understanding and, and the feelings uh, are there for me and, and of course, you know, with family and, and things about like your grandmother and things like that. You know, um, all of these uh, live within me and, and, and I think every time I, I read it again, coming back and just reading it again now, um, still resonates so much with me and so it was a very special, uh, it was a very special production for me um, and I was very grateful of course to be able to be a part of it and uh, yeah so of course you know coming back to me again and everything is just like whoa, 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 I'm gonna try it to his mom slash Nini Farah Okay, um, I don't know whether I was excited to be reading this again because I think this was one of the more emotionally draining plays that, I, that I've had to do. Um, but it was fun. Um, so it was also trying to remember how we pitch uh, the piece. But also I think that time I was afraid that I think the bio written then, I write the bio different for every show. Um, so I think I was going through that fear of like, oh man, I've reached that stage, I'm being casted as mother and grandmother. <laughs> and that's it, man, I've reached that age. Um, but thank God I'm not, I'm not a mother or grandmother at all. Uh, but yeah, it was nice revisiting. Um, this, because this is a lighter version, but I did remember that play took me quite a while to snap out of it because of what it took out of me and also because I think, yeah, you go through that stage where shit, I'm becoming just like my mom and I think this was also a direct reflection of what um, most women go through. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to add that 2018 was a very different time um, and most of my casting choices were based on the personality of the person um, and I knew Farah was going through a lot with your mom. Um, and there was a lot of resistance during um, rehearsal to play um, this um, other character. Um, yeah, so I think that's for me where the emotionalness is because, yeah. How about you, Mona? Afari? Mona? Actually, Dr. Dini is quite a difficult character, I have yeah, to say. Yeah. Like, you have to play a lot of the word play that John John buries in, in, doesn't even bury, he puts it like right there for you. How was it like? I mean, it yeah. was, yeah, like reading John John's uh, piece, it was beautiful because you kind of, you know exactly what he means without like any form of direction. And I think during rehearsals we did talk about that, like there was nothing in the script, just words. But that was also the beauty of the script because it was so clear what he was trying to say. Um, but yeah, like I think Poto with with Farah, so like it was one of the harder plays uh, for me. Oh, I'm gonna cry. What about me? Because <laughs> I'm tired, so I'm more emotionally charged. Okay, guys. <laughs> but um, like it was the year when I was also diagnosed with dementia, so like going into this show and playing. It was it was quite like difficult for me to read it. Like there were times in rehearsal where I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna listen to what's happening in the scene. But but like it's been few years then, and I think coming back to it, so it was difficult. But I I think in some form of way it was also helping me process what was going on. Um, and then with Dr. Dino, so she was kind of the outsider, so it's nice to be able to play a role where I'm sitting on the outside of a family going through someone uh, with dementia, a diagnosed with dementia. Um, and then coming back today, it was just like, I mean like, you know, we progressed over the last few years, but like maybe I'm reading Potong again, I just recall like all the emotions that came with doing Potong. And I mean, you know, that's, that's 
art, right? It kind of helps you with your life, it helps you heal. So, yeah, photo was very special for me. So, that's all. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Um, for Ekamatra, actually when we staged it then, in 2018, it was quite a milestone because it was a, a point of time where we were ready to tackle difficult issues. And uh, being an ethnic minority theater company, a Malay theater company, sometimes we ask ourselves like, you know, how many Malays do we know out there? You know, so this, uh, this is one of the pieces where we feel that, you know, we need to reach out. Uh, and um, yeah, it was it was quite a difficult um, piece personally for me uh, playing this character because maybe I'm, I don't act as much as some of them. So uh, I believe acting takes a, it, it's a different ball game. You, you need, it's a different kind of investment, you know, uh, to the craft. So and uh, and this is one piece where I kind of. Understood, you know, the psyche of an actor, like what you need to go through, and it's not just like you know coming to rehearsal or or just you know yeah, but uh, yeah. And uh, for Saliha, the character, it's uh, I mean, uh, I'm thankful to, to the entire team, the my fellow cast, to Irfan for being very patient because uh, how do you portray someone who is beyond the facade, you know? Yeah, so. It's a lot of unpacking, I guess. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, I think, sorry, I wanted to correct myself. I think all the characters are all very difficult and interesting and marginalized in different ways as well. So um, maybe I want to uh, throw a question to John John, which is like, why did you write this play in the first place? Can you share that? Or do you remember like what you were responding to? I think my my most immediate response was also like witnessing my grandfather going through dementia, and so like every time I visited him, like with my better half, like he would ask me to go get married. I'm like, yes, why not? Like <laughs> I'm like I wait for one, I can have two. Yeah. <laughs> so but 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 otherwise like yeah. So and and I could see that like sometimes like when he. Like he didn't recognize me, but he still tried to make conversation, right? And then like he wouldn't recognize my mom, even though like my mom like was the main caretaker for 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 some time. Yeah, so I I thought there was something that if I'm going through that and and I could like I guess I, I felt that maybe out there like there's somebody that's probably going through this and probably in a much worse way because like because for me like I only visited like once a month or maybe like once every two months, right? But then like for others, like for the caretakers, I'm sure like the the trauma must have been like a lot more. So yeah, I think that was the immediate response. Um uh for the for this part of the story. But for the part about Potong, uh, rather the circumcision part, um came to me because like I really wanted to be part of M1 Fringe Fest. And the theme for that year was skin. <laughs> Skin. Why not foreskin? And, and I had this idea where there would be a foreskin fairy going around collecting all the foreskins. But that didn't work out, I guess. <laughs> so I'm glad it didn't. And, and while I was like, feeling rejected and rejected, then, yeah, then, then that sense came to me like, hey, maybe there's more to, there's more to skin than just like um, the foreskin, right? And also be or kin, right? See what I did? Yeah, so yeah. John John is all about wordplay. You can pick up the book in the I'm so sorry. So, I guess uh, something, uh, I wanted to just bring in just a small one. Uh, so, just now, Muna was talking about how the, uh, John John's plays doesn't have a lot of directions. Uh, so it's a lot of it is dialogue, or almost all of it, uh, except the section titles and the little like lines that accompany each section. So just now you saw it on the screen. So that's also uh, in the book as well as per how John John wrote it lah. Um, actually, something that I realized was quite interesting was um, even even like comparing the book versus the, like the copy that the actors are working off the script, right? I think as someone who works in theater, you're very used to like 
the script is alive, you know, it actually doesn't really get script locked in a way like film or TV does, I think. Um, you know, a li an actor in, in live performance can kind of change it sometimes, you know, depending on how you're responding to your fellow actor and things like that. So, I don't know, maybe it's a question for you first before everyone else, but what's it like having your play kind of preserved in print, but then also knowing that it kind of can change and go away from you as a playwright as well, like what's that like? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> so I'll try to come up with a good answer as well. Um, I, I, yeah, so I think for me, like, when I write something, I don't want to have uh, stage directions because someone told me once that you are you trying to be a megalomaniac. Like, why? Like, yeah, so, so I try to like, control myself. And in my mind, like, like theatre is a collaborative piece. And so when I go and pass the script to the director, to the cast, I also treasure and value that input, right? So I don't want to be too directive. Um, and even when like when I work with different casts or different directors, right, my, my direction to them is simple, like, look, it's okay if you skip lines, it's okay if you cut lines as well. Uh, it's just that every word that I've written carries with it meaning. So if you can transfer that meaning into um, into the mood or into the mood, then I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. So I'm not really precious with with the words, rather with the idea that I'm trying to push through. Um, yeah. So for example, when you guys look at like the captions, right? Actually, like I've always said that I don't need them to be up on screen. But I think for Howard for Potong, they always have it up on screen. Um, and some of the audiences are like, why does it look like chapter titles and kind of thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. So. I, to, to me, really, to, hmm. yeah, that's the best answer I could come up with. Yeah, maybe to respond to that, because like, um, uh, Ethos asked me to write the foreword for the book, right? Yeah. And I felt that actually in the section titles and the lines, we see more of you, John John, the writer. Um, because it's like it's like the pure version of like your ideas, which the no one can, can touch through the performance. So maybe that's why they show it. I don't know. I mean, just guessing. Yeah, I guess so. I yeah, I because it's very specific. You know, you choose like uh, what mono no awari and so that you know there's certain things that you're trying to go for or kind of suggest. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, so so every title kind of like connotes like what each scene is supposed to be like. That's the feel, and to me that's it. Like if the if they if the cast understands it, the director understands it, then fine. Like you can remove it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm not very precious with the words. Even though I'm very into playing with words, um, and usually I just leave it to the cast to kind of like play with it. And it's the same with the book. Like for the readers, right? I I let you imagine how you want the setting to be because I believe that these stories exist in different pockets of our communities, right? And yeah, you you don't have to have a very strict vision of who Saleh or Saleha is. You don't have to have a very strict vision of who Siti or Adam is. And you can kind of like see it unfolding in your in your own communities. So yeah, that, that's how I, I approached it. In the previous panel that we did, John John actually said that the reader of the book is like a collaborator as well, who kind of completes the the world of the play. Which I thought was really interesting from a kind of playwright versus a author kind of perspective. Um, yeah, which makes it cool because theatre is collaborative. So then yeah. you've made the reading collaborative as well. Um, maybe to throw it to the actors, right? Like what has been a line that either is your favourite from Puto or a line that you kind of wrestled with or resonates with you um, a lot, whether it's about your character or another character. Uh, for your fun as well, to respond. <laughs> I, I folded the page because just now they want us, so I don't follow. I think it's the one that marks line. Um, I'm not even sure if at this stage she understands what comes out of her mouth, but she just needs you to listen. I like that line a lot. For obvious reasons, I think. So the one to mark to Adam. Mark to Adam. About me. Yes. Thank you. My line will be any titi titi But actually, uh, my favorite line is mine is the it's a very simple line that says uh, mak sayang Adam and Adam sayang mak I think and it's been said in the Malay language which, which makes it even more deeper I guess yeah 
knowing where he's coming from and all that. I would agree with that, and I think in, in the play, it, it, the person is very far away from yeah. from there. Like it's either through a phone call or it's through yeah. somebody else's body, because someone says it through um, too Lini, even though you know not as sad. Yeah. Oh, for this, this one the DVD last year. The best every single night. <laughs> Never got old. <laughs> I love, I love, I love how you and Parade have the same line because I have the same line and I did the same thing because they did warn us and I bookmarked the, the page and it's there like I'm not even sure at this stage if she understands what comes out of her mouth but she just needs you to listen and I think like listening is something we sometimes forget to do so it's a nice reminder. Oh, do you have a TV? Your, your answer as well? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, am saying yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's also something that I can't imagine saying to my mother yet. It's a very, you know, like how? How do you express love? And I, I think that's how Porto affected me and, and, and my readiness to cut off ties with. Because um, 2018 was when my parents got divorced. Um, so that was, that was interesting. So personal. So personal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jordan, do you have a, a favorite line? My favorite line is this word that repeats. It's either silence or jeda. <laughs> because like to me, when things are silent, that's the when that's the most like the noisiest, the noisiest uh, state uh, on stage and even in like conversations, right? Yeah. So those are the lines that I really treasure the most. Yeah, and those are usually like my notes when it comes to the rehearsals. Like, yeah, that silence you gotta play. It's a pregnant pause. It's not an awkward silence. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I really treasure those. Yeah. Is there a reason why you put Jeda in Malay eh? instead of English in the book? Yeah, because Jeda is heavier. Like Jeda. <laughs> but silence is like you can be angry. Like silence. Yeah, yeah. So I think Jeda like it's just just that one mode. Yeah, and, and I really, I really like it. Uh, yeah. And I picked it up from Fendi actually. Yeah, I, I never knew the word Jeda uh, before I read his work. Yeah, and so when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's some cool shit, man. So, uh, yeah, Jeda. <laughs> you know, at Fendi, right? Yeah. We'll tell him. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, perhaps for the actors, right? Like, what, what, how do you all feel with like knowing that this play is in a book? Uh, published, um, like I said, theatre is also very ephemeral. You know, it's also your names in there. It's like, oh, this production was, you know, presented so and so time and all. Like, how do you feel um, about that actually? Or if you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. I'm just happy for John John actually. More yeah. than anything else, yeah, that he got published. Especially for Ikamara, I think when he first started working with him, uh, you know, he's really a special. Uh, writer and uh, it's, it's nice that we see his work, you know, in, in, in a book format yeah. and can be shared with a larger audience, you know, beyond just the, uh, beyond live performance. Mm. Actually me and Irfan and Jordan were talking about this during the launch of the book, right, about um, there needing to be more published plays um, by Malay playwrights. And how like we don't have a lot of them. Uh, I don't know if I whether you have any thoughts about that. Like why do you think so, or what do you think is the challenge that needs to be overcome? You think to have more Malay writers or more published? More published. More published. Yeah. yeah. I think we just need to do it, lah. I guess you know, really. Just um, I I mean I do agree. We we uh, every few years then you have one, you know, right? Yeah. But then we have a lot of playwrights, we have a lot of Malay playwrights, you know. I think uh, we need to be more proactive, I guess, to, um, to do that. Because sometimes if we get caught in the work itself, then we forgot about, like, where does this work sit, you know. Um, beyond the, again, uh, the, the life environment, right, you know. Yeah, and uh, I think, uh, especially I'm also an educator, so I think it's very important that um, generations after that, you know, able to 
look at this work again as uh, as their reference or their, their their inspiration. Yeah. So I think uh, moving forward, really, I think it's really about uh, making the effort to make things work. Yeah. I guess it's both like archival and documentation, but it brings the play. Like we hope there's going to be more restagings, right, of the work. I mean, like whether it's in schools or whether it's in Kamatra and of Howard as well, right? Both Howard and Puto. I think that's why uh, plays are also published in, in books as well. Um, yeah, access, increasing access. Because I think Ikamatra is trying to do more of that as well, like archive documentation. Um, <laughs> might be PR for Ikamatra. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think we've gotten some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, very cute questions actually. I think there's some students <laughs> in the theatre. Um, okay, because they call you Mr. John. Oh, that's not true. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. John. Mm -hmm. Dear Mr. John, <laughs> okay. how long on and off did it take you to write photo? Ah, um, they always give me like a year to write something like from conceptualization. I usually take about like three weeks to write whole play. Mm -hmm. um, because like I usually need to kind of like um, paint the story a little bit like, and then to meet people, uh, look at things and then then let everything uh, synthesize and crystallize like during the last month. Uh, um, yeah, so usually about three weeks um, it takes them. Yeah. Short. Yeah, um, it is short, uh, but it works well because like I think I write better under pressure. Yeah, yeah. But 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 so to be clear, it's three weeks. I need it before rehearsal starts. Uh. I'm not. I won't like until like like one week before the show. I'm still like trying to change the script. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm the kind of person, yeah. Uh, follow up. Dear Mr. John. Oh, okay. <laughs> is the play autobiographical based on your own personal experience? Maybe beyond what you've shared just now? Um, I guess some bits are, if you can, if you can say as such. Um, yeah, that's a very painful question, actually. Like, in a... Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. I think in some ways they are like see, like Potong and Howard. Like um, I guess that like, I was trying to kind of like revisit those past experiences and trying to like either make right or kind of come to terms with them um, through the writing. Uh. Yeah, but I've always felt that it should never be about me or what I think the situation is. Because like, I remember, and I keep sharing this with like, Nabila and also with Itos la. Like having this thing done here in like, Center Volume 2 is really, it's really amazing Because like, the last time I wrote something that was, I felt was autobiographical like, I think only two people came and it was staged here in Center Volume 2 And yeah, so I, I've always realised that Yeah, you, it can come from, a bit of it comes from my background, my experiences But it should speak for others uh, in a sense, like others that are marginalized who do not have like um, the voice or the platform that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, I'll push all of the attention away from you as okay. <laughs> yeah. um, to Irfan. Dear Irfan. I don't know why they're all like letters, very cute. Uh, dear Irfan, you said you used to cast according to person slash personality and how it goes with the character. How does it differ now? And does it shift how you view theatre? Oh, uh, so I've worked on uh, with everyone in different capacities before we, we did Portong, and I thought it was well, a perfect time to get all of them together. And interestingly enough, after Portong, um, I didn't tell you guys this, but I felt really bad because I didn't know how to get you all out of it. Uh, I felt that there was no safety in um, guiding you, ushering you out uh, of the the work, because uh, you know how theatre in Singapore is, you, know, you rush the next one. So what I did was I tried becoming an actor myself, and that is one of the most painful experiences ever. Um, it's it's really hard when you have to uh, embody this character for 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 a few nights and and go through the highs and the lows and 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 then a left without um, without guidance. Uh, 
Yeah. So I, I, I apologize if I at any point have um, been um, not um, safe. <laughs> But I think this question of safety came about kind of like within the last few years. So it could have been like the early, you know, that's the early time when we didn't really think about safety that much. Yeah. Especially in military, perhaps, yeah. I don't know. I mean, for example, um, there's a letter that um, Mark writes to Adam, um, and Dr. Dini write, uh, reads it up, and I asked um, Muna if she would be okay to have her mother write it in her own handwriting. So it affects you I don't know, you know, sometimes it's, it's tricky because I, I, I do want to chase after that pure um, uh, I, I don't see the character and the actor different Yeah, I, I think um, when I talk about ritual performance I, I, I think uh, a performance as ritual only I think the first, first person that it should affect is the actor Yeah, and then the audience can follow Yeah how yeah. did the actors have anything? Disclaimer, yeah, I'm not naming. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I have no naming. Yet. <laughs> yes. Para is naming. <maybe. laughs> I don't know. Just oh. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I thought... Like, I agree with it. And I, I don't... I don't know. Thank you for thinking of that. But uh, I feel like everyone also had a conversation with me to see whether I was okay with it. And, it was all very personal things and I think he knew my story and he knew exactly what I was going through so it was it was nice and I did tell my mom like oh you're going to be part of the show and she did come to watch and she knows that she wrote that letter that I read so I thought that was quite fun and she always likes everything I do everything is like great that's amazing so you know it's nice for her to actually be part of it part of something that I've been doing it looks like I'm favoring Muna, but no, this is yeah, everyone as well. Everyone. Yeah, everyone also. I think I think with Farid, uh, like there was um, a lot of duality. Uh, as, um, oh, this play was presented as the Tekamatra's 30th anniversary, I think. Yes, yeah. So there was this Farid as the as the artistic director, and Farid is this like, beautiful actor uh, who I worked with in '94, five, and um, and we talked a lot about. Um, Peter Pan, do you remember Peter Pan? Yeah. Um, Which Peter Pan? Um, the band or? Are you okay with me, Sharon? Oh. oh, okay. So, uh, Farid has like this like Peter Pan syndrome where he doesn't want to grow up, actually. Um, and and, and I, I thought Saliha was interesting in, in that she plays different roles and at different times and always suppressing her true self. So, there was something that I wanted to bring out from Farid. Yeah. I'm not gonna cry. I think I mean I think like to bring it to back to John John. Yes. Um, I think it's also how the play kind of there's so many themes there. And I think sometimes we make uh, we we make a lot of the word play, but sometimes it kind of like comes at the expense of like no, actually so beautiful beyond that that funny word play. Uh, oh my god, he went there, but he really goes there because of themes. There's a lot of themes gender, sexuality, family, sacrifice, <laughs> even the idea of like, uh, like circumcision. I remember um, reading a review where someone was like saying how, because the books come with translations, uh, there's a lot of footnotes and like translations. And someone said, like, oh, but it's very hard to translate the, the, the significance of certain rituals and certain cultural things that we do in, in, in Malay society or families, um, unless you're in it. <laughs> and maybe that's why we feel it, because like a lot of us, we, we come from Malay families, la, however mixed or, or and things they are. Um, yeah, I don't know, how do you feel that people are feeling so much? I feel bad. Like, <laughs> I, I always feel like, like, like every time, because I usually watch the face, and then like people like suddenly start crying next to me, and I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> And then like sometimes like we get like letters like he like hey this really helped me to like go through like some um, some pain stuff I was going through. I I feel better because like, I feel that I've helped somebody, but I still feel bad like if, like I'm like getting the person to revisit some past trauma. Yeah. So in general I feel bad. Um, but hey, you cannot spell funeral without fun, right? <laughs> Yeah. 
power. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, the, that line was, yeah, like, I, I don't know whether you guys know the backstory, but like, because there was this like Australian dude who like came to my aunt's like funeral and he started like recording everything on like his handy camcorder, like the entire thing, and then at the end of the day, like, he, he gives us the recording. Like, when he was recording, like, everybody felt was like, my god, what is this guy doing? Like, like, how weird is this masale, you know, that kind of thing. But then, like, when we rewatched it, like, it felt different, like, I, it helped us to kind of, like, process the loss. Because, like, what happens, like, when you are at the cemetery, like, you kind of, like, oh, I have to go through this process, like, I have to make sure it's done this way and that way. But when you watch it again through a different format, you yeah, it helps you to kind of process it better. Yeah. But but now it's normal. Because of during COVID, right, with all the burials, right, everybody was like live streaming the, the funeral. It was kind of weird in one way of yeah. Because yeah. I, I was I was at my grandfather's like funeral and yeah, we were like live streaming to family members all the way in like Malacca, you know. And I thought it was funny. I mean I it was, I wasn't laughing while I was there, but I thought it was like funny how like certain things have like changed uh, over such a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, I think going back to the question, I think the the line of exploiting and and, and uh, transforming is very thin. Yeah. So how how do you, how do I navigate that? Yeah. And especially um, with John John's text as well, you know. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, to explain what I was saying earlier, I feel that everyone has that uncle or that cousin who who maybe you know um, is is transgender or you said cross dressing, and I feel like that that identity is not we don't talk about it enough, mm -hmm. and, and that's why when we see it, it sometimes becomes I feel like something comes off as funny the first reaction, but there's so much depth, and that's why I think character like Saliha is very important to see uh, in theatre. Um, yeah, and. Uh, can I can I add to yeah. that? Yeah, actually during rehearsals, also we also had a lot of talk about how to not make uh, Saleha, the character of Saleha, be a stereotype. But I think sometimes this character is used of stereotypes to their advantage. They use it as a way to just arm people, you know. And then that's that's where we found power in Saleha in, in that she's very sharp and she 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 she, she acknowledges her her fate and but but within that humor and within that wit there's a lot of hurt that lies underneath. Um, so it is sometimes okay to play cliches. Yeah. That's a good point actually, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so there are no questions, so let me try and read them. Okay, can I just say one last thing, right? Okay, just to sure. jump in on, on, on this whole thing about um, you know the casting and stuff like that. I think it's very unique and quite a special thing in Singapore because you know we are so small, right? So it's it's actually you know, this idea of kampong, you know. And and actually, you know, Irfan talks about how he feels bad now because, you know, we all have our own thing and, and he kind of tapped in on that and stuff. But, you know, uh, I think it's it's nice in a way to be able to, especially me coming from, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm of both-ish cultures, but I grew up here, so I've always felt Malay, but you know how things people can be, you know, growing up like that. I've never really felt like I belong. But when I came in and when I was casted, you know, with, with, with the Malay Theatre Company, you know, it was very big for me. It was a really amazing uh, opportunity and experience. And it really, I was so grateful for it. So to come in and actually, you know, my, same, for me, it's the same like my mom. I have a single mom. You know, it's a single mom. Um, you know, uh, my grandmother isn't, uh, doesn't have dementia, but, you know, there is a strange dish relationship there. So for me to be able to share that with a, with a little kampong, with a nice, you know, with this special group of people who I think, you know, we, as a small community, you know, to be able to have that safe space, space with one another, and to be able to really share, I think it's quite unique, and it's quite special. And I think that, uh, you know, moving forward, of course, I think in terms of casting, you don't want to do that. You know, I think casting, should be something that is open, right? Anyone should be able to, like, as an actor, I should be able to audition for any role. And I think that maybe it doesn't happen so much in Singapore. I feel like we need to move forward that. A lot of their companies are quite safe in that. They like to you. I mean, anyone who watches the in Singapore will know this. You tend to see the same people again and again and again. So I think we, we should move away from that. But at the same time, I think, you know, there is something to be said about the safety and the... You know, 
think so. That's very good. I think I, I do agree that we should have more kind of open auditions and, and to kind of, especially because there's young people in, in this theatre. I also think it, it helps in terms of like uh, bringing theatre forward, you know, rather than always seeing the same faces again and again. Um, yes, okay, I'm going to go back to the Q&A. Um, let's see, dear John, what would it be like if you directed your own face? <laughs> <laughs> it was so boring. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, like you get tired of like, like going through what I have in my mind. Um, but also like in terms of casting, you won't get so diverse of a cast. I'll just cast CTK for all the roles and you end up with you. Yeah, because all the characters, um, CTK is the prototype for all the characters and I always start writing with her, like speaking to me, like the lines. Yeah. So I, if I was a director, I, me being my so simple minded, I'll just like, yeah, CTK for every role. <laughs> yeah, so that would be boring. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I would, yeah. I like, because I'm like, oh, he wanted to cast CTK. <laughs> 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 so he yeah, yeah, we yeah. knew. CTK was busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, every play like it's always the same. All the actors are told like CTK yeah. is supposed to be you. Like, yeah, yeah so like uh, live with that. Like. <laughs> um, uh, okay, not a question, but please restage. Ooh. It's sold out. If this person couldn't go because it was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Got me. I mean. <laughs> um, okay, to all. <laughs> This question is very funny, so I'm going to read it. Which paragraph do you think would you hope to see as an excerpt in an O-level paper? Initiative, wait, let's see. Gender relations, yeah, spread. Yeah, translated. Yeah. You can't find an English subject. Yeah. There's urgency as well. Urgency. Yeah. <laughs> this one. This one. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, dear John, how do you divorce yourself from your works? How do you do your research such that it affects others who are marginalized? Oh yeah, so I think Nabila actually covers this really really well in her forward. Like um, the beauty of it is that I'm John John, right? But outside like people don't really know me as John John, right? I go by uh, I go by my given name, right? And so like yeah, like it's easier for me to kind of like slip in and out of like conversations, um, and it kind of helps me to like filter certain thinking. Uh. Yeah, like hey, this is me as John John. I'm trying to like get uh, stuff in to do my writing, and this is me as uh, you won't know my name. Kind of like focus on professional stuff. Yeah, so that, that's how I kind of help to filter. Um, and I've been fortunate because like in my career or in my life, like, I've met so many different people. Um, of different backgrounds, of different like interests, yeah, and so um, that that really helps me to kind of like pick up stories. And I guess the, the another thing that I really like to do is to kind of just like spend more time listening to people. Um, because at the at the root of it, like even when people like complain about stuff, right? Actually, there's always an underlying issue that they're trying to like speak up about. And so yeah, that kind of like helps me like. Yeah. I think the other part of the question is also like, how do you make sure that, because your email, for example, like, oh, yeah, yeah, so how do you tell stories that's like not about you per se? Yeah, I get this a lot. Like, hey, why you write about like members of the LGBTQ? Like, you're not one of them, right? And I'm like, yeah, human, right? <laughs> like, they have feelings too, right? Like, and they they deserve to like everybody deserves to be loved, right? Yeah, so for, for me, like when I get those kind of questions, I get very triggered because like for me, it's like I don't see people by like what others define them. Like I, I, I accept people for who they are, how they choose to present themselves and that to me is enough because at the end of the day, like I also would want acceptance from others and at the end of the day, like, like, like I see it in my play, like even God waits until the end of time to like judge us. So I don't see why like I have to go into the space. Uh. Yeah. And and so for me, like when I speak to people from different communities, like different um people people from different fringes, right? In my mind I'm just like I just want to understand like how are you as a human 
like processing this experience, and in and I hope that I will be able to kind of like bring it out into like center stage to kind of help others process and also like um, gain some awareness. And that's the thing that, that, that that's the thing about like all the jokes that I put inside. Like I always want to feel that as you laugh, you kind of like wonder like actually what am I laughing about actually. Am I laughing about the situation that others are in? Is it a case of like what's the German word? I would I would I would sound smart. Ah yeah, that word, yeah. yeah. Like, is that a case where like you are laughing at other at other people's expense? Or are you like part of that system that kind of like puts them out in the fringe? Yeah. So yeah. Thanks for that. Um someone asked what do you write plays for? Money? <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> what, what do I write plays for? Why do you write? It's fun. Like, I I just, like, otherwise, like, I keep hearing CTK. It's so <laughs> mean, like, it doesn't get annoying. <laughs> so, like, like, I just write because I, I know that, like, it's just stories that I need to tell, and so I just, like, take some time to write um, in between, like, whatever work that I'm doing. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a question for everyone on the panel. Um, someone asks, considering the closeness of practitioners in Malay theatre, what advice do you all have for complete beginners? Change profession. <laughs> Don't get into it. I'm kidding. You know. I let you re-answer later. Okay. <laughs> closeness? I mean, because everyone knows everyone. It's, it feels like from from the outside. It feels like oh. everyone knows everyone. So, for a complete beginner, what advice would you give? Uh, can I say something? Yeah. 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 So I mean, as an actor, you know, in Singapore, you have to understand the context. As an actor, anyway, you know, if you're an actor in the big wide world in the UK or whatever it is, you've got to understand the market and the, and the environment that you're in. So in Singapore, you have to understand if it's small, if it's a nice little community, then how do you get into that community? How do you understand that community? You have to be a part of the community. You know, we don't exist in a vacuum. So, as an actor trying to come into the community and trying to be a part of it, you have to, you know, you have to get to know people. You have to be okay with letting them see you in your different capabilities, you know, letting them see you fail, you know, whatever it is, try, you have to try. But, you know, don't, in that, I, I would really want to say that in that small community, again, going back to what I said just now, it's, we, we have to start looking at that as a, a really good thing, you know. In that way, if because we are so small and because everyone knows everyone, in that way, if you go out and you try your best and you are really honest and, and, and people see that, that goes around. It's very fast. You know, similarly, if you are not, then people know so lot. But you know what I mean? But that, in that way, you know, we should really uh, feel happy about that because I think to be able to get that opportunity and that space to grow as an actor in that safe community where people know, okay, this guy, girl, whoever you, you know, is working hard, wants to be an actor, actor, actress, you know, is come comes and be there and is brave every every single time, you know, and for people to to sort of um, you know support you in that way is 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 nice. It's, it's a wonderful thing, you know. We are not out in the world where you know someone's just gonna like you know take advantage of you and stuff like that because we're so small. Everyone knows everyone, so really lean into that. I would say, you know, because if your dream is to be an actor, you know, um, to start here, you know, and to start in a small community that wherever knows everyone and to have that safety net is nice. It's very good, and it will allow you. Like so, for me, when I started, like I, let's say again going back to that, you know. To have uh, if I sort of want to to really tap in on my own experiences as as you know Salif, um, and to know that whatever it was, I knew that the people that I was working with in this production, you know, the intention was for the work. The intention was here; it would stay here, and that's what happened, you know. And so, as an actor, as a, as a human being, you get to grow. You know, you if you are brave enough. You know, and, and of course, if you have the right people around you, you will you will feel like you can be brave enough. But I would say, you know, um, lean into that. Don't don't be afraid of it. Yeah, just to add to that, I think I understand the 
the struggle or the don't know where to go as a new actor. I, like when I first started out also, like I wanted so much to be in theatre, but you know, it was a community that you had to like, how do I get into them or how do I get them to know me? So I, I felt that I had no idea too, but if that's really what you want to do, then yeah, like, like Saleh said, you know, you gotta meet people, go for shows. If, if it's just uh, talking about my experience, like go for courses, uh, you know, like find out about workshops and things like that. You gotta put yourself out there, try and learn. Like I, I didn't go to like art school or whatever, but like, you know, I had to find ways to learn how to do this, I guess, or know enough. And you're bound to meet someone when you go for these workshops that people run and, and you know, Ikamatra would sometimes run uh, courses and, and stuff as well. So go for that. Make sure that people know you and make it known that this is what you want to do and, and that's how you first get your step in. Yeah, email, anything you know, because it's so small. You just Google, oh, Ikamatra, okay, who is the Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. email, just email. It's done. It's like, yeah. yeah. And do like all the small little things like being crew. I learned so much oh, yeah. about theatre um, um, by being a crew for like a month plus for Wild Rice. Uh, I was under LB. Hi, LB. <laughs> uh, the, under the campaign to confer JBJ, and I watched actors every night performing, and I was like, and I saw how Ivan worked, and it, it. You might think, oh, this is not the way to be an actor, but there's something about observing as well. Observing is very important. Be an FOH, they will let you watch the show if there's a seat. Do all these things if you really want to do it. You cannot let your ego of wanting to be an actor stop you from becoming more than what you imagine yourself to be. Yeah, and workshops are really important, yeah. Yeah, it's also to start somewhere, I agree. It's just to put yourself out there, or however else you put it, right? And I always believe that you have to do the things that you have to do in order for you to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, so sometimes, like, I mean, I started out, it was, I was actually, I started out Tere Kami. Um, it was from a Salina play, a book that I read, it was for an A level text, which I read when I was 15 or 14, right? And I was too young to go and watch plays, my brother brought back the program. And then I read every single page, and then they were looking for youth volunteers, and that's how I started. I started doing lighting, costume, you name it. And then I hang around just to be able to watch other rehearsals and just to make yourself really thick skin now and offer yourself, make people coffee and like, oh, because I want to watch the rehearsals, and you just got to start. And I think, I mean, I think it's harder now. To be fair, I think it's harder now because there is a ready market. There are art schools, and not every parent can afford to send their kids to an art school, right? So workshops are also important. And because there is a ready market, there is also a ready stream of people with certain qualifications and certain things, and therefore people who are not within that reach will find it harder. You know, then I think the workshops are really good as well. And basically just to start somewhere, you can't be idealistic. You've got to start somewhere and just do it. Front of house, you need it. Right? And go audition, just go. No, just go. Just go it's audition. Scary, it's but scary, but never just go. It yeah. sucks to go for an audition. Really <laughs> and you must be okay with rejection. It still sucks to audition. Still sucks. Yeah. Yeah. At my age, yeah. it still sucks yeah. to audition. We all still, you know, deep down we hate it. Yeah. But, you know, it's... I it's still freeze up at audition. Yeah, it's a necessary <laughs> evil. So, yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just let it be. Um, uh, you must understand that theatre is a space where you will be exposed of your vulnerabilities and there will be times where you will feel insecure and all these very negative things and all that. But I do believe that uh, not just here in Kamatra but everywhere else, in, I mean their companies and the people that you work with has enough tender love and care that will support you. So don't be afraid to give, okay? Yeah, so on your part, as long as you are very giving, on the other side, whoever, which, whichever company you work with or whoever you work with, they will be supporting you. Thank you so much for the advice. I, I also wanted to bring it back to kind of playwriting and writing as well. Because I think speaking of being insecure, I think the playwright 
sometimes it's like the most insecure because I mean I don't know John John, but I feel that sometimes you can be very lonely, right? That being the when you're writing it, it's before the actors come in, before the directors come in usually. How is that like and also someone asked like how did you break into the local theatre scene as well? I'm not insecure. <laughs> I'm just awkward. So, <laughs> like um, um, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, how I got started, right? I was quite lucky because, like, um, uh, I got asked to write a play for school, and then teachers couldn't find any other student to write a to write a play, and then it just kept on happening, uh. And then I got into. Um, in Ekamatra, like they say that hey, this guy can write. Like not sure it's good, but he can write. So like, actually, on the program, kind of thing. And so just things just kept snowballing. And eventually, like in uni, like I realized that hey, like there's a cheat code to your FYP. If you choose to write a play in, in Malay, your Australian teacher or your Australian professor cannot judge you. Like, <laughs> she can't say like you're doing this wrong, right? And so, it's my work. So, <laughs> our was a FYP project actually. And like I felt bad my professor because like she was like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so, so that, that's that's how I really got started. But but I think like what they said, like it's really about putting your work out there. Like it's okay. Um, but for the writer himself, like it must be very, very clear that you're not writing for yourself. It's never a case where you are trying to tell people about your vision for the world. That's why I feel like it really should be about the people. Um, and that's why I think for me it's really important to situate myself like within that like a minor literature. Like and because for me it's really about like pulling out stories from from the minorities, from the fringes, into the main stage. It's not about putting my fantastical kind of like imagination up on stage because like it just doesn't work. Yeah, you have to understand that your work has to kind of be commercial in a sense and it's not going to be commercial if it's just going to be like the mental masturbations of yourself yeah. you have to relate to people um, and I think like on a, on a more macro level from a business perspective me being a business strategy associate and so, so uh, you have to create demand if you want to be part of this industry and if as a starter, like how you create demand is to kind of like get more people to come and watch shows with you as you like go out and observe and study the, the industry. If you don't create that initial demand, by the time you get in, there's not going to be a demand, and you, and there will be less and less companies, like lesser place being stage and so on. Yeah. So the first step to being successful within the industry is always to generate demand yourself first. Yeah. Like chicken or egg thing. Boom. It connects. Um, thanks for that. Uh, I, want, I want to give you the last word, so think about it. Um, but uh, there's a question that we can't really get into, but I think we also did talk about it, which is like why this play should be uh, published. We talked a little bit about that, but I think like this is basically why we need any play to be written or staged or performed or published. Like To me, they are all part of a larger thing, like a larger thing that we're trying to do, you know? It's, yeah, it's not just about the publishing, it's everything actually, like this discussion, this room that we're in, this moment that we're all in, whatever we're all thinking about individually, collectively, um, and I think that's why we do what we do. Your last word. Can I give the last word? Um, wow, okay, uh, be awkward, brief and kind. Um, I think that's like the last words I want to give, um, because like, it's okay to kind of like be uncomfortable in some situations uh, as long as you're very clear that you are trying to learn something out of the experience. Um, it's always important to kind of like uh, be brave about certain things because sometimes like you're going to face lots of brick bats and shit. Like when Howard came out, like I got like hate mail coming in to say like, hey, like you're Muslim, right? Like why are you writing about this, right? Um, and, and so like if you really believe in like certain things you really have to like go, go through it kind of thing and finally be kind like even if the person on the opposite side like hates your guts for doing whatever it is that you did it's important to understand that nobody wakes up in the morning wanting to screw up like or wanting to get into like bad mistakes or whatsoever right? like nobody says that ah good morning I'm gonna screw up today 
So like you gotta like be compassionate enough and be kind to say that like hey um, maybe if the person is spewing so much hate, it's only because of a certain thing that happened to him before, and I need to have that conversation with him. Not a debate, but a conversation. Um, yeah. So be always make sure that you are awkward, brief, and kind. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you so much for the discussion as well, like, and your friend. Well.